Throughout our world, few places are more remote and mysterious than the continent of Antarctica. Spanning over 5 million square miles, this mass of land and ice is over twice the size of Australia, yet it holds a grand total of zero permanent residents. Its brutally frigid conditions and strict visitation laws have made it impossible to fully explore, leading many to question what secrets it may be hiding in its icy landscape. In the mid to late 1950s, the United States was heavily invested in nuclear technology, and specifically nuclear weapons. In the midst of the Cold War, it was imperative for the country to gain superior knowledge on the subject than the Russians. Because of this, the United States was constantly building and experimenting on all things nuclear. Over the course of the Cold War, over 1,000 nuclear devices were fired as part of US government experiments with few being as controversial as the experiments conducted in Operation Argus. The main goal of Argus was to test the effects that nuclear weapons had in colder, high-altitude regions. With these experiments, an estimated three nuclear missiles were fired in the vicinity of Antarctica. However, the results of this experiment were never finalized, and the whereabouts of the location in which the missiles hit is still very much a mystery. Following this test, the task force in charge of the program was quickly dissolved, and the majority of the documents associated with the project were destroyed. Included in these documents was also the film reel that would have shown actual footage of the tests. So this alone is pretty sketchy. The destruction of evidence, the hiding of evidence as to what happened there, is something that definitely raises some red flags, but it's also something that's not too surprising for that time period. But where this whole situation gets very strange is when you take a look at a previous mission that took place in Antarctica that has confused the public to this day. In 1946, the United States Navy sent troops to Antarctica to supposedly set up a military base and to train them for cold weather conditions as part of Operation High Jump. Now this wasn't a small convoy or anything like that. All in all, 4,700 troops were sent up to the frigid landscape in December of that year. The operation lasted just barely a few months as the weather conditions supposedly got too severe. Which, I mean, I'm not sure what they were expecting there if we're being honest. I mean, it, it, it's Antarctica. In total, it was reported that four men lost their lives in the short expedition. However, some believe that the number is actually much higher than that, and that in their time up there, the United States Navy was attacked. It is theorized that upon the trip through the harsh landscape of Antarctica, the brigade was attacked by unknown crafts which forced them to retreat out of the area. The attack was highlighted in a now leaked Soviet report where KGB agents had gained knowledge from US soldiers present at the site of the attack. The US soldiers claimed that while they were being attacked by these hostile forces, they reportedly opened fire on the crafts, ultimately shooting one down into the water below. However, the advanced technology of these crafts proved way too much for the fleet to handle and they were forced to retreat after losing several aircrafts and men in the attack. After the fleet returned back to the United States, one of the leaders of the expedition, Admiral Byrd, began discussing with the media that the United States should set up defense bases in the polar regions, and that flying crafts from the area posed a serious threat to the United States. After these shocking and controversial statements, Byrd was thrown into a mental institution and never heard from again. Piecing together the alleged attack on Operation High Jump with the subsequent bombing of the region with Operation Argus, the whole situation leaves a dark theory. Some believe that Operation High Jump was actually an invasion of Antarctica in order to fight off some mysterious force. I mean, why else would they send that many soldiers there? Like, do you really need 5,000 men to set up a research base? And maybe when this operation failed, and when the United States Navy realized that they were no match for this advanced weaponry, perhaps they fired those nuclear weapons to take care of the enemy once and for all. Now I feel like this theory is definitely out there, but the fact that it was in an actual Soviet report, and the fact that Byrd was speaking out about this enemy and was quickly silenced, makes it still intriguing to me. 
Plus, I can't get over why they would send that many people up there to set up a base, and I can't get over why they would fire those nuclear weapons in Antarctica for research when they didn't even end up posting any actual research from their findings. And what about the tapes? Okay, you know what? Let, let me chill. Let me chill real quick. So obviously, I have a lot of questions about this theory that I wish I could have answered. And perhaps the biggest one to me is what actually was this unknown force that may or may not have attacked the Navy that day? And the theories into this are just flat out crazy. Many of the most popular conspiracy theories surrounding the region of Antarctica deal with alien life. Its vast and unexplored landscape makes it one of the only places on Earth that could really hold alien life that would go completely undetected. Like, aliens could just be chilling up there right now, and guess what? Uh, we'd have no idea. I mean, I'm not saying they are, but we really can't say that they aren't, right? Now, throughout the years, many have pointed to things like these pyramid structures throughout the region and claim that they are bases of aliens. They think that aliens actually created these things. And further structures have also been spotted on things like Google Earth that seem to look like man-made or alien-made buildings or layers. And due to our inability to explore these regions and confirm or deny whether these are structures or not, it causes our imagination to kind of run wild with what could have made them and what could be living in there. Now me personally, I tend to view these structures as just kind of weird shaped rocks, but I will give some credit that quite a few of them do look pretty convincing. Now just recently, a photo from Google Earth went viral of what appears to be a spaceship crashed in the snow on an island just outside of Antarctica. With this photo, you see a definite trail behind a large tube-like object, making it appear that whatever this thing was, it had just crashed landed. Now this photo has quickly become synonymous with alien life in the region, though some experts are quick to dismiss it as a rock that simply slid down a mountain via avalanche. It's a really interesting photo that has many who believe that aliens are truly out there excited. And there's no shortage of other photos like this that supposedly show crashed UFOs in the snowy Arctic. Many believe that these crafts are the work of alien life forms thriving in this desolate region. These people also tend to believe that these aliens were also responsible for the attack on the US Navy. It's a frightening concept, thinking that hostile alien life forms may be living in Antarctica, and the idea that they have attacked before may also mean that they may attack again, and with no defense bases anywhere in the region, nothing would be stopping them from attacking, let's say, a, a research team of ours in the area. But to me, the idea of aliens being responsible for these mysterious crafts is not even close to being the most interesting theory. For Ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe. Bro, okay, this shit goes crazy. Uh, let me just start by introducing the theory, and then I'm gonna backtrack and explain how it could be possible. So stick with me here. So the theory here is that members of the Nazi party were able to escape to Antarctica after World War II. It's said that the Nazis also took with them advanced weaponry from the war. Weaponry like flying saucers that were responsible for the attack on Operation High Jump. Okay, so confusing and weird I know, but let's unpack this for a minute. Even before the start of World War II, Hitler had a fascination with Antarctica. There, he sent multiple fleets to survey the landscape and supposedly look for margarine fat due to the fact that the country's supply would soon be cut off during the war. On these missions, it is theorized that Hitler saw an opportunity as the vast continent provided the perfect conditions for a hideout should things go wrong. Now fast forwarding a bit here to the actual war, it is no secret that Nazis were innovators and they were obsessed with creating new and crazy technology. These technologies included things like wonder weapons and all sorts of other shocking and disturbing things. And it is believed that at one point, the Nazis set their sights on creating an advanced aircraft that would be ultra powerful and especially difficult to bring down. These crafts would have been something completely new to our world if they were actually able to create them. And in this theory, believers claim that they actually did. They believe that the Nazis were able to build these flying saucers in secret and use their overpowered weaponry to defeat their enemies. 
And looking at all the other crazy stuff that they were able to invent, I mean, it's still improbable, but it's definitely not impossible that they were actually able to accomplish something like this. Okay, so if they had this advanced weaponry, how did they end up in Antarctica? Well, perhaps after World War II had ended, the remaining Nazis fled their homeland to avoid persecution and landed in Antarctica, where they likely would have never been found. And the idea of Nazi soldiers and officials escaping Germany after World War II is something that is definitely not outlandish. So many of them have been reported dead, and yet very few bodies were actually ever discovered from the high-ranking Nazi officials. Which that's a whole conspiracy theory of its own, whether these people are still alive or not. But if they are, maybe they fled to Antarctica. And maybe they took their advanced aircrafts with them, to A, escape undetected, and to B, keep their technology a secret to possibly use at a later date. I mean, this kind of makes sense because as I mentioned before, the Nazis had more information on Antarctica than probably any other country at the time. Because remember, they had sent crews there on multiple occasions. Also, in 2016, Russians actually discovered a legitimate abandoned Nazi base in Antarctica. So they had at least one legitimate settlement there and it might not be too far-fetched to believe that maybe they had more that just haven't been discovered yet. So perhaps when the US Navy was visiting the area way back in 1946, they stumbled a little too close to the Nazis' secret base. And the Nazis used their advanced aircrafts to fire at the crews and deter them from coming any closer and truly discovering their hideout. And stretching it even further, maybe the US retaliated by shooting those missile tests in the area in order to secretly and quietly kill off the remaining Nazi troops. It is so crazy to think about, it is so weird, it is so probably not true, but it so totally could be. Maybe someday we'll find out if there was any truth to these wild theories, but until then, many of us will remain fascinated by the mysteries of Antarctica.